Well, this is gonna be tough, huh? What could we even say about this opening shot? I mean, the music is amazing. Somehow a parody of a whodunit score while still being a whodunit score. Sure, the framing of the tree, an almost silhouette in the foreground of the house, the slow motion dogs, the low angle of the house giving it its own sinister vibe as well as the fog sliding across the driveway on an overcast morning alluding to the mystery we're about to uncover is all top notch. But otherwise, yeah, gonna be a tough one to find wins in. And the second shot gives us some serious mug shadowing. Mugshot shadowing. But since you've all seen this movie, let's let's not be coy. You know this is Harlan's mug, which pretty much tells you everything you need to know about the man at the head of the Empire. Let's just say the rest of the family wouldn't be caught dead using such a tacky mug, but someone in the house would. Production design. Can we just give a prop master win? Yes, we can. And this dang score taking itself so seriously in the best possible way. She's worried about making a mess. Although I'd like to point out that the dropping the tray cliche has always been a strange one to me because has anyone ever dropped something because of a surprise in real life? I guess I've never come across a dead body, but I don't think it would be my first reaction. So at least she catches it. Mystery novel font used for the info text. And while we're doing these long wins, the name and location cards actually reveal another insane level of detail. Steve Yedlin, the DP, went to painstaking measures to make this movie that's completely shot digitally appear as though it's shot on film. From the gate weave, which are these little jitters you see in every frame, the grain, the halation, another problem with film where light bleeds beyond its borders creating a halo effect, and a whole entire color grading process with math and algorithms and someone could probably make an entire video about it. The fun detail is that the name and title cards get their own unique gate weave etc that you'll notice as it moves against the background independently. Relevant background dialogue. She really didn't murder him either way you slice it. And it's not a Ryan Johnson movie without a JGL cameo. Your sister just had a friend she loves slit his throat open. Let's be sensitive. Sensitivity. Hi, Walt. Hi, Martha. It's Walt. The class divide starts quick. We already know how the thrombies view Marta, not even bothering to listen to what she says. Excuse me, ma'am. You with the help? Also that. You're part of this family. Part of, owner of, tomato, tomato. Jamie Lee Curtis really nailing home how nice she is to be hugging the help, I mean, member of the family. That last one didn't need quotes. We're very sorry for your loss. Thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> Sincerity. Lucas Lee Curtis? Well, since I've made myself the eye reflection guy and Linda's glasses are showing a window in the reflection, you better believe the fun fact that they made lighting rigs to look like windows and reflections is a win. Just the blocking and shot composition that Ryan and Yedlin use throughout that works from multiple angles and is always intriguing to look at. Oh, we had our own secret way of communicating. Secret way of communicating is so vague, I love it. She specifically meant our communications were coded, a la Dwight Schrute, but it would be easy to assume she meant they shared glances and nods. Nervous, sketchy Michael Shannon with a limp is a solid red herring murderer. I mean, I don't do much fiction reading myself. Big but... fan. <laughs> Trooper Wagner's fanboy moments are a thread that runs through the entire movie, and they deserve their own win counter. Dad said the plots just popped into his head, fully formed. Can confirm. He wrote this entire movie in like, well, less than 10 minutes. Ricky Lindholm, half of Garfunkel and Oates. Look him up, you're welcome. Donna, she's my rock. <laughs> Rocks do generally scream and spill their drinks when a fork hits the ground. My son Jacob, very politically active. Come on, that's not fair. I think Billy is just using his phone to try to find Georgie. I love the very deliberate signal that we're dealing with all unreliable narrators, and we shouldn't trust anything we're told or shown. Looks like T has come out to play in the Knives Out geez, States of Terra. You guys are with me, right? There's actually something in this scene that would demonetize the video if I pointed it out. This is Benoit Blanc. Benoit Blanc. <laughs> Agreed on the name. But what a setup for the movie. Block's name is another goofy throwback to Poirot whodunits. The last of the gentlemen sleuths? You solved that case with the tennis champ? You mean the one in sleuth? You will find me a respectful, quiet, passive observer. Foghorn Craighorn? Yes, Craig. I am so sorry to my fans across the pond. Craig. His accent is amazing. Although I'm starting to think Daniel Craig watched this episode of The Office. More of a Savannah accent, which is more like molasses just sort of spilling out of your mouth. And then Tony Collette. Yeah, it's skincare, but it promotes a total lifestyle. Just watch this episode of Parks and Rec? No, it's Tinnifer with two Y's. And they both just ran with it. Immigrants, we get the job done. Yeah, you really threw away your shot there, bud. I, 
of Hamilton. And who are these lamos shoving Hamilton references into everything these days? Be like making a video about a cartoon princess and referencing Hamilton. Psh. Dad, are you firing me? Not that anyone needed proof of Christopher Plummer's talent, but did you notice this was a 1 minute 16 second take and it was also the only take? Another slight difference, Linda's opinion of Ransom is that he'd give his great-grandma a loving touch before leaving, but that's not the way Walt remembers it. I'm not sure if it's because the letter matches Harlan's wardrobe, or if Christopher Plummer just wears the hell out of that shirt, but I don't think I wear enough pink. Sorry, forgot. <laughs> Don Johnson's little eye dart. He's proven he might not be the sharpest bulb in the shed. Are you baiting me, detective? My baby brother in front of a police detective and a state trooper. Walt doesn't run sh Why don't we uh, just take a little break in movies? Uh, oh, no. She's gone. Lakeith Stanfield is always a win. I know, most actors with that status have bigger resumes, but he just doesn't miss. And in this movie, he's the only real person keeping our feet on the ground. Each of the family members is a clue card, his partner is a mystery geek, Blanc, <laughs> come on. And even though Marta is pretty normal, she also went along with Harlan's crazy plan. So, Lakeith is all of us. <laughs> also, he calls Benoit Benny. Come on. Quite frankly, Benny would get Optimism, misplaced optimism, but it's still optimism. I mean, the guy practically lives in a clue board. Okay, and Elliot also hits our first meta commentary on the genre slash fourth wall break comment, and I think we need another win counter for them. And I'm gonna throw one on for this too. Yes, we did it okay. anyway. Ha! Benny just took an extra long look at Marta's shoes, confirming that it was one of the first things he noticed and explains why most of his questions to her were softball questions. He wanted to uncover the mystery, not just have her arrested. You have a regurgitative reaction to mistruthin. Yeah, we actually need one more counter. Benoit lives in his own reality with his own vocabulary and phrases, and I love every word of it. Miss Truthen. The opposite of a motive. And if that support was threatened, Miss Cabrera... <laughs> Blanc is a good detective and also has eyes in the back of his head. Come on, no, have you seen her Insta? She's an influencer. <laughs> we didn't specify what he had to be a fanboy of. Did he plan to fire Walter? Richard is having an affair. She was pocketing the double payment. So that's three, which is a great setup for a big unraveling conspiracy where actually they all conspired to kill their dad because they dislike each other other enough to be misdirection. What we get is so much better. Somebody suspects foul play and goes through this hotcha dance of hiring me. <laughs> Daniel Craig's hotcha dance might be my new ringtone. Physical evidence can tell a clear story with a fault tongue. And with the flip of a coin, the film changes genre. A thriller nestled inside a whodunit like a donut. We'll come back to that later. Fun fact, the name Harlan Thromby comes from a choose-your-own-adventure novel called Who Killed Harlow Thromby? I know how this is gonna end. I have to say I really appreciate that she's doing an actual IV push rather than sticking a needle in his vein like they often pretend is possible in movies. She even has saline flushes between injections. Ransom, there's so much of me in that kid. Yeah, that tracks. Ransom goes all whodunit too. Close the book with a flourish. You know, this is an interesting and efficient method of murder. I Leave it to a murder mystery writer to think it's super cool that he might die by one. So, if someone switched the meds on purpose, I'd be dead in 10 minutes. And of course Harlan has already thought through how this all plays out. The plot all formed in his head as soon as Marta couldn't find the naloxone. Now if what you said is true, I'm gone. There's no saving me. Look, I love this movie and the mystery is fun and there's no way Harlan would know any different. And I'll even give Marta a pass because she was freaked out and he kind of forced her hand anyway. But a nurse would know and now you'll know that if this exact situation ever did arise, 15 minutes while waiting for the ambulance to arrive is not that long to do CPR. Well, it is for one person, but the house is filled with people. But a morphine overdose shuts down your respiratory system, so no oxygen gets into your blood to be pumped to your brain, but that's what CPR does. It puts oxygen in your lungs and manually pumps your heart, which sends the oxygen to your brain. And then when the ambulance got there, they'd have naloxone and take over CPR. He may still have ended up dying, he is old. I'm just saying that this isn't the only solution if you come across this exact situation and your mother's undocumented. Anna's performance here rocks, and it's also another moment to add to the list of these awful rich people don't actually see Marta. She's just awkwardly with her back to Joni, who when asked, must have said she was getting the medicine ready. And then Walt does the same thing. Call attention to the time. God, it's midnight already. If he saw her leave and drive off, note at the time. He only remembers looking at his watch. This all really just serves to freak me out more about real life murder mysteries. Our memories suck. You do this, Marta? Hmm? This last thing? For me? <laughs> There's at least a sliver of him that loves being a part of a murder mystery. Climb the side trellis. You gotta be kidding me. I am not. Do it. <laughs> Time dilation conversation. Huh? Secret window wall has a painting of a kid climbing out of his painting. He'll see you. 
through the glazed window. And of course he's gonna have all this ridiculous attention to detail just rattling around in his brain. Dad said the plots just popped into his head, fully formed. Love that the coin flip is the signal that no time has actually passed in the present and she was only just thinking about what really happened. Wait, Daniel Craig, a murder mystery, and Christopher Plummer? Is this the girl with the dragon tattoo? Keen-eyed viewers already guessed what was going on with that blank letter. I keep waiting for the big reveal. And in it, she plays his wife, who's getting poisoned by her husband. Wait, Tony Collette, a story about someone slowly being poisoned in a twist ending? Is this a sixth sense? There's this Hallmark movie called Deadly by Surprise with Danica McKellar. Fun fact, Danica McKellar is the greatest Hallmark Christmas movie actress that ever lived, and I sincerely hope she's forgiven me for calling her Winnie Cooper on Twitter because she's awesome. They're putting children in cages. Tony, nobody's saying that isn't bad. Well, depends on how much 4chan you subject yourself to. A perfect picture of not only another unreliable narrator, but also someone so self-involved his memory of this casual dehumanization of Marta into a prop for his argument went over swimmingly with her, and everyone was laughing because introspection is for pores. I actually think they all really believe they treat her like family because they don't spit on her. Ooh, don't pretend like you don't love this shot. Apparently Ryan has seen Casino Royale. Or I guess Apocalypse Now. Something is afoot. Look at you, Marta. Gravity's rainbow. A novel. Yeah, I know. I haven't read it though. Neither have I. Nobody has. It's true. The book is 760 pages. In that amount of time, you could read The Crying of Lot 49 like four times. How about it, Watson? So now you're Sherlock Holmes. Better hope Moriarty doesn't show up. So sorry. Am I interrupting? This machine unerringly arrives at the truth. Asesinato ella escribio. Wait. M. Emmett Walsh talking about security while replicant Joy stands there. Eh, she wasn't a replicant. Is this Blade Runner 2049, but also the original? Okay, we'll have to try again later. Looks like a Japanese horror movie. Are we all gonna die in seven days? <laughs> Trooper Wagner now also a confirmed weeaboo. They're all straight out of his series, the Menagerie Tragedy Trilogy. Pretty cool. Yeah, you can actually see Marta erasing the tape. Kennel. I awoke amid Kennel. <laughs> They're really gonna do a number on my... Sweet beans. Main parts of the plot unfolding in the background. CSI KFC? A rare acronym burn. Let's take a second to appreciate the many amazing facial expression responses by America's ass. And son? Son. Father. It's really one of those moments you can feel Ransom nudging Cap off the Vormir cliff. Nice. Matter of fact, oh my God. each. <laughs> Seriously. But also language. I'm not eating one. I own it. <laughs> oh, improvised by Michael Shannon. And again, this piece of the plot happens in the background for only us to notice. It's the trick window from a kill for all season. The game is afoot. Shoo, do you ever untie your laces? Harlan's assets included, um... The house. The house? I love that Frank's paralegal has to point everything out for him. Why, why did I immediately assume she's a paralegal? She could be a lawyer, she could be an executive assistant, she could be Fozzie Bear's boss for all we know. Well, speaking of Twitter, let's, uh, let's check in with the source. Hi, Carrie. Please don't think I'm some creepy weirdo, but what's the deal? I want to get it right. Send tweet. All right, we'll have to come back to that later if she responds. In the meantime, oh, what's this? Oh, good. The director responded. Let's just thank him for his time. Send tweet. Good. Fine. So, Queen of Law. Brian <laughs> Jackson replied to my dumb tweet for this dumb bit. Holy crap. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Ryan. I love your movies. Thanks for, thank you for replying. Alan, you can take, take this family. piece of paper and shove it! <laughs> Everyone else is being diplomatic and trying to reason, but the one with the biggest chip on her shoulder, the one with the real business and the real connection to their dad, loses it. You cops, too, out, out! Yeah, it's, uh, it's too late for Andre to get out. Out! Right now! <laughs> Trooper Wagner just following direction, which is because he's a fanboy of Harlan. You could still not know exactly where this is all headed even if you deduced as I did that Ransom came back specifically to see everyone freak out about Marta getting everything. Oh, did you notice it? Could you feel the camera get picked up off the dolly? What a fantastic way to imbue chaos into the scene. Dolly in, freeze, and then the operator lifts the camera off to go handheld. I know, I know, 
I can see you in the comments. You saw that tweet about Ryan breaking the city cam. Well, maybe it's true. I think it was just a joke. It has nothing to do with this scene. It doesn't even really make sense. You can't just pull a camera out of a steady cam in one fluid motion like this. It's very clear the camera was picked up off the dolly, and they even confirmed that it was on a friction mat on top of the dolly so it wouldn't slide around, but it wasn't actually secured. They even had to paint out the dolly and tracks later in the shot when the camera spins around. And the score ratchets up, the violin's getting all chaotic and disjointed again. Of course, the racists in training would want to live stream an immigrant stealing his family's fortune. Can't be sure, but now it's a party, family, fun time, and what is going on with these people? I'm actually weirded out that I feel confident I'm right because none of the letters are actually legible. Nice hidden cut there on the move past the doorframe. Ransom to the rescue with another fun camera move, a low angle truck. He must not like bullies. Ah, the Knives Out challenge created by Patrick Willems. It was a tough one, a lot of us nailed it, but none like the wolf in sheep's clothing himself. You know, wool. Queen of law stuff is a taxing job. She's earned a little rest back there. God bless you, you're useless. Thank you. Come in for a few minutes just to burn it all down and leave. Thank you. Typical Yoda. Huh. Ha, that huh could apply to the crazy story or even crazier reality that she switched the meds back after Ransom tried to frame her. Because f my family. Same reason you always pick the wrench. I think you should give it back to us. I know he was like family to you, but we're his actual family. I thought I liked you, but shut up, Meg. This lighting design, hiding the majority of her face, just like she's hiding her true intentions? Oh, <laughs> and Jamie Lee Curtis's little optimistic look here. Why has grief the provenance of youth? <laughs> Smart of Block to pick a family member who won't interrupt his philosophical musings. He basically goes all out here, so... I think you have something you want to tell me. I'm in no rush. Patience. Because Harlan gave me all your resources. Your turn to kneel, Zod. Well, it could have been worse. They could have kidnapped your mother, and then you'd be getting a ransom note. Ha! The New Yorker with a profile of Blanc in it, and the reason Ransom hired Blanc all right there out in the open. Eh, a match cut of sorts. What's the cheese? You know. The surveillance tape at the Thrombia estate was all scrambled. Yeah, magnet! I mean, who will blow up the whole real building just to blackmail me? There's no phone call, no email, nothing. No, I haven't checked my email persistence, but still believable if a little obvious and funny the second time through. I mean, the actual evidence is sitting up the street at the crime lab. There's no demands, there's no meeting place. Okay, baby driver. All right, second evil X, we hear you pivot for your buddy Edgar Wright. Knives out and brick, same universe confirmed. More of a Whalers fan myself, but it's been two decades. I guess I could support the Bruins. Get out. Get out! That was the dumbest car chase of all time. And that's from a guy who, I, I, I don't know, something about horses. Watch your head. Thank you. Hey, you don't need to thank <laughs> He's clearly also a Captain America fanboy. Fog would lift. The, the, the arc would resolve. The slinky become unkinked. No, Ryan Johnson. No. Or wait, is this our friendly neighborhood spider friend? The thought of you stays bright. A little sound time. Obviously, Blanc would see him as a kindred spirit for his love of puzzles. I just handed it to you. God, you're not much of a detective, are you? The thing is, that's partially true. And I think it's a deliberate choice to stand opposite the insane intricacies of Ocean's Eleven or the Joker's plane in the Dark Knight. Blanc is good, just real world good. It takes the detectives talking about mud before footprints even occur to him. Well, to be fair, you make a pretty lousy murderer. I gotta give Ryan one more win for everyone's favorite subversion. I mean, we've seen this scene in movies a thousand times. If a character learns new information that changes everything, we get an insert of them casually opening it, and then a quick cut to their face, and then the music jumps. But instead, Blanc opens it in the background, barges in, and confuses everyone. Also, fun fact, this scene was the first time he spoke as Blanc in front of the entire cast. You're a pack of vultures at the feast. Knives out, beaks bloody. I never can understand Tom York, but I don't, I don't think those are the lyrics. Not what I was expecting to hear at all. <laughs> Blanc. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. What's, what's all this drum? Indulge me. Oh, and he's been waiting all movie for this moment. I love that unraveling the story is his real... I, it's his denouement. This performance that Daniel Craig had entirely memorized start to finish, by the way. This is when he needs to roll up his sleeves and get his tie out of the way. Look, I understand that this is amusing for you. Wow. Wait, Lakeith Stanfield in a movie with a mystery? I give up. But look, Cassius wouldn't be super stoked on listening to another white dude explain away all this insanity. 
It's been really bugging me that no one sits in the center of the knives, and the camera moves for every single interview. But now I understand. We needed the guy who could fill in the donut hole. Mr. Hugh Ransom Drysdale. Somebody knows something. Trying to let you know. Did you know? What were the overhood words by the Nazi child masturbating in the bath? You and Harlan were drama mamas. Your Brazilian nurse. Call it casual xenophobia. Families from Ecuador. Call it a bunch of awful people who never got to know a member of their family. Families from Paraguay. At least they're consistently inconsistent. Your family is from Uruguay. Ah, it wasn't hard to shoe dirt after all. The Slayer rule would nullify the change will. Ransom did say. I was Harlan's research assistant for a summer. So he wouldn't have to Google it. What about the Slayer rule? I did just Google that. There's something so rewarding about good people being rewarded. You knew because there is the slightest, almost imperceptible differences of tension and viscosity between the two liquids. Blanc's little blind test that with tears in his eyes, he already knew Marta would pass because she's... Good nurse. I didn't come to Knives Out to be moved, Ryan. But I'll take it. This is stupid with two O's. And the battle of wits between these two is the best in the film. Marta's probably as smart or smarter than both of them, but they're fairly evenly matched. And even though it's just the last act, it really closes out the movie so strongly. It's your word. You have her confession. Oh, letting the mask slip there, Mace. You always were a bit of a jerk to Kappa. Huh, Kappa, Kappa. Get out of here with that pushing along the knives. Now that's a belated entrance. Vinny, look, I... I hear what you're saying, but just... <laughs> Appropriate reaction. That Hallmark movie she told me about with Tanika McKellar. Deadly by surprise. Hey, another Winnie Cooper fanboy. Oh, I did it again. She told me she has a cousin who works as a receptionist at the examiner's office. She did say that. And my cousin, who's a receptionist at the medical examiner's office. In for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> So I noticed these growlers because I thought it was sort of a goofy character choice for Ransom, but one's missing and here it is! Benefits of watching this movie 18 times in two weeks. I knew Harlan wouldn't just kill himself. And you think you're talking to the man who killed Harlan in the dark, alone, and your plan is to blackmail this person? She wasn't talking about me, she said, You did this. Hey, uh, hey Ryan, you, uh, you a fan of North? What would you most like to say to your son? We don't want you. Maybe Hugh can be your son. We don't want Hugh. We want North. Cause you made the help call you Hugh. Cause you're an asshole. Language. Our ancestral family home. Yeah, that is who he is. You know, Holland, he bought this place in the 80s from the- <laughs> There's a few deleted scenes that expose how competent of a detective Blanc really is, but I love that one last little dig showing that these people are fake and that they lie and Blanc has known from day one. <laughs> Wait. Daniel Craig, a non-American female lead and someone who uses their tell as a trick? Is this Casino Royale? I did it, I got three. What, what do I win? I mean, even the simple idea that the cops record every interview was set up in the first five minutes. These dolly zooms and simulated anamorphic warping and they milk this moment for everything it's worth. Half of the audience remembered this line. So you can't tell the difference between a stage prop and a real knife. Half were caught up in the camera tracking them to the ground. Works both ways. Okay, I'm not gonna censor this because it would just, it's too perfect, so plug your ears if you have to. Shit. And somehow we still walk away loving Chris Evans. And props to Ryan Johnson for letting the moment sit rather than voicing in Harlan's line, uh, like I did. Which actually makes that line, knives out, shadow, knives in, shadow, knives in and out, shadowing. Oh, the irony, as a wise tortoise once said, a person often meets his destiny on the road he takes to avoid it. If you just left that ball there. Bribing a cop without consequence. I guess they think he's still rich. Oh, we had our own secret way of communicating. Urine, it was urine. Goodness, even his life-altering letters are all theatrical. When did you know I had something to do with Harlan's death? Oh, from the first moment you set foot in front of me. Get it? Cause foot? Also, he did try to warn you. Something is afoot. You won, not by playing the game Harlan's way, but yours. You're a good person. Marta kind of has a theme where she wins games by not playing Harlan's way, huh? Why can't I beat you at this game? Because I'm not playing to beat you. I'm playing to build a beautiful pattern. Also, it's more solid reasoning for Benoit going easy on her and ignoring the blood. Wait, wait, detective, why me? 
I trust your kind heart. Blanc knew before this movie opened exactly what each of these people was actually like, and also that every one of them lied to him and the cops. Assuming he attempted to dig up the same dirt on Marta, he'd have found out that her mother was undocumented and that Harlan had increased her hours not for being his nurse, but for being his friend. It's the same reason he didn't question the story about the go board being the loud noise. Ha, he hasn't always been smiling, but he is now that it's all wrapped up neat and tidy. Yeah, I had that coming, Richard, and we already know Jamie Lee Curtis has a serious right hook. Whoa! <laughs> Subtle. Fun fact, this wasn't actually planned, but on the day Ryan made the call that it was just too perfect to pass up. You know, since it is her house now, and also that's the cup we talked about in the beginning that was clearly only for Harlan. Aw, and everybody gets a clue board painting to put above their fireplace. There's so much narratively going on in this film, I ended up not talking much about how beautiful the movie is in general. The mystery lighting, often just firelight, constant slow push-ins on characters, again, the number of props and trinkets, the little spanking statue as Harlan is punishing Joni. Book awards scattered throughout the house, it's an over-the-top, real, lived-in world. Just setting the movie in foggy, rainy New England creates an atmosphere you wouldn't get if we were in LA. Every actor is having so much fun, it's extremely evident. And obviously, the writing is stellar. You'll notice a new setup and payoff every time you watch the film. Beyond the genre switch, I absolutely love the structure of the story. Whodunits often have a straightforward path, where death occurs, people are questioned, and the mystery unfolds in a variety of ways. But Knives Out jumps ahead to after all the initial interviews, so that the timeline is already established and we feel as though we're entering the mystery underway. And then, Ryan closes out the mystery at the end of the first act. Genius, really, the movie becomes not about figuring out who killed Harlan, but how Marta will get away with it. And I'm sure some portion of the audience predicted the final twist, but lots of people were caught off guard after Ryan pulled the curtain back and said, no, this is, this is it, there's the mystery. Ironically, there are also a few huge giveaways you wouldn't necessarily pick up on, like Harlan saying that dogs wouldn't bark at Marta, we know the dogs bark that night, and then we see them bark at Ransom. Juanetta says back again to Marta, which only makes sense if he'd been back once already. Interestingly enough, that tracks with the fact that Kay Callan had to wear real prescription glasses so her eyes looked magnified and she couldn't see anything. Ransom even comes out and confesses at one point. And no, he didn't commit suicide. Even still, we're almost forced to root for the murderer. While I never wanted to see Stokes catch Dexter, I wanted Blanc to succeed, just not at Marta's expense. You don't even know there's another villain until the last 25 minutes, so until then, it's like this competition of the likable people. The immigration subplot sub-theme might have put some people off, but Ryan doesn't necessarily pick a side. I mean, obviously, if you're alt-right, stop. You should, you should stop being alt-right. But the virtue of Marta isn't about her country of origin. Marta's a good person because she's a good person. She took a job as Harlan's nurse and then became his friend. Even though there's actually a piece of me that wonders if Ryan had intended to make Marta the mastermind in the end at one point, or maybe it was just a red herring. The champagne thing is weird. You want some champers? I can't, I'm technically working. No, no, no. Get up I here. have a glass of champagne. And also, it's weird to make a point of letting us know that Marta convinced Harlan to cut his family off. It's possible it was a plan at one time and Ryan realized the poor immigrant murderer and thief isn't as compelling as the kind-hearted nurse. But either way, she seemed to have Harlan's best interest in mind. Cut the line on all four of them. I certainly should have encouraged Walt to write his own stories, like you said I should. Harlan felt that he'd failed his family, and that weighed heavily on him. You'd probably never think of letting your kids have your money as a disservice, but it no doubt can be. Marta's advice was so Harlan could have some peace about it. I'm sure the immigration conversation made a lot of eyes roll, and that's okay as long as you allowed yourself to engage with the content. Ryan didn't pull any punches to either side. Joni knows the narrative, even if the facts are iffy. Germany needed in 1930, Come on. whatever. Because she mostly reads headlines. I read a tweet about a New Yorker article about you. And on the opposite side, Richard spouts the rhetoric without any nuance, empathy, or introspection. They're both just shells of each argument, the way some people are. Jacob is most likely just a spoiled brat who doesn't understand the weight of words yet or how being a troll actually hurts the troll a lot more in the long run. And Meg is only a social justice warrior until her target for social justice threatens her well, SJW degree. which has some pretty palpable irony. My point is that Ryan pretty much plays the middle of the road. I'd assume a true alt-right troll might think Jacob is cool and justified, and only an anti-SJW thinks a person that fights for social justice would be insulted by that nomenclature. I know all of these words have deeper meanings than surface-level interpretation, especially in our culture. That's sort of the point. I don't know what any of that means. We can politicize or philosophize or economize, legalize, or any other verb Marta's story all day. It's what we do as people not affected by it. 
But Marta is actually a human being, so is her mother. I've said this before, but we tend to quantify or even commodify the struggles of others to suit our purposes. And the Thromby family does so, so intently that they undervalued the relationship she had with their father by tens of millions of dollars. Blanc puts it best. Not by playing the game Harlan's way, but yours. She was just a decent, empathetic person trying to do the next right thing. Eh. Even when given the opportunity to push a little, even acknowledge that they're all garbage fire people, she doesn't. You want my insight into the family. None of them are murderers. That wasn't even his question. But it's why Blanc trusts her even when she has incriminating evidence on her person. Marta is a very lovable character. This moment is sincerely moving. I assume Benoit Blanc will have to move on to another mystery, so I'll miss Marta. But hot dang, will I watch another movie in this universe? I sort of love the idea that Daniel Craig would so obviously prefer to wear tweed, affect a drawl, and converse with little old ladies than do any more bonding. He's great as both, so whatever. A donut. A donut hole in a donut's hole. Donut hole, donut hole, donut, donut, donut hole, the hole, donut, that hole, donut hole, donuts hole, donut hole, hole in hole, donut hole, donut, donut hole, donut, donut hole, donuts hole.